Hello, my friends. Over the last year, I've been reading some Marcus Aurelius. Uh, I think a lot of you are familiar with him. And one of the big voices of Stoicism. In meditations, at some point, he said, do things trouble you? If so, change your opinion of them. You'll be like a mariner, he says, who's leaving troubled seas and coming into a calm and peaceful bay. And when I first read that, it really stood out for me. It really struck me. And the reason is that I feel like one of the core issues that we humans face is this dissatisfaction with life. We're always looking out and blaming the externals and saying, well, I'm dissatisfied because I don't have enough money, because this person was mean to me, because this is happening to me. Very poignant for us here in our Hawaii adventure. And as we look forward and start pondering, what are we going to do next? And kind of thinking, could our whole family become more adventurous and start, start exploring the world in new ways. Because that exploration comes with all kinds of discomforts. So does regular life. Going to work, getting caught in traffic, just navigating the relationships that we have in life. All of these, it's very, very easy to look and say, the external is where the problem is and that is making me unhappy. So the external controls my internal. Now, unless we are ninja Jedi Zen masters, that's going to be true to some extent. I've been exploring this stuff and working with it my whole life and externals still can have a profound effect upon me. But if we hear Aurelius's words, it can take us in big steps towards being less influenced by the external and having more of an internal base, a foundation from which we can work. Some examples are in order. The other day, our family, we were doing our family meditation and our youngest, Liliana, she is six now, and she has a lot of trouble sitting still. Her body is very squirmy. And she was lying down next to me and she had her feet up on my lap. And her feet kept kind of moving and kicking a little bit. As I was sitting there trying to peacefully meditate, I found myself, <sighs> I'm trying to peacefully meditate. I want to be in that, that safe, peaceful harbor, safe, peaceful bay that Marcus Aurelius was talking about. But her feet are annoying me and creating an issue inside of me. So I was externalizing it and thinking, oh, Liliana, can you stop? But then there was the shift. If I can change my opinion about this external, then everything changes. And so I switched into gratitude and thought, wow, how amazing that I have a six-year-old daughter that wants to meditate with me and to be close to me, to be in contact, physical contact with me. And that joy of being a father and being close to my daughter and having that, that connection. Then, suddenly, her feet there, right here on my leg, were a joy. It was an integral part of the experience and actually made my meditation better. So the same external, the little kind of kicking feet, what was my opinion of that external? In the first case, mm, I don't want it there. It is disrupting my meditation. In the second, gratitude. Another way I could have changed it is to say, oh, this gives me a chance to be extra diligent in my meditation because there's something there that could disrupt my state of mind. And what a good chance to be peaceful and placid and find my peace with that thing. You see how this works? As parents, if you're a parent, our children are going to go through all kinds of different stages. And with Mirabelle, for instance, there's been times when she kind of has gone into 
an anxiety or anger kind of phase. And for a few weeks, it'll feel like, oh my gosh, where did our peaceful daughter go? Because, wow, she's super snippy. Now, there again, we have a choice. What is our opinion of that? In the one instance, I can cause myself a lot of self-anguish by saying, I want her to behave in a different way and she's not behaving that way. I set up expectations. So there it is. I want this to be looking like she's peaceful and meditative and I want other people to see her and be impressed by how peaceful she is. That's gonna say something about our parenting. And then what do I create inside of myself? Alternatively, I can look at that and I can say, she's going through growth in development and exploration. And that's such a good thing that she has this opportunity to grow and to not have people that are saying you're wrong for exploring her feelings and her emotions and finding her own ways to work through these difficulties. Then we can still help to help her through that, especially if it's something she wants to get out of, which she always does. But we, Rebecca and I, don't have to have internal, uh, just like tension eating at us all the time because we want things to be different. A final example that you can probably relate to. Uh, maybe not the first part here. This has to do with Rebecca when she was breastfeeding uh, the girls, and Mirabelle especially, who, who stayed nursing for a long, long time and really was connected with Rebecca and did not want to leave her side at all. The part you can probably relate to is that that meant a lack of sleep for Rebecca, a profound lack of sleep. She was trying to get through the night and just have one night of sleep, but that did not come. Night after night after night, broken sleep when she would get woken up, sometimes every 45 minutes. For a long time, she fought this. She wanted to get a whole night's sleep. She read books, she watched videos, trying to find any way that she could rearrange things so that Mirabelle could sleep through the night and Rebecca could too. Everything failed. Here was the external, it was eating her up and she was trying everything she could to change it. Finally, she read something somewhere where someone said something very simple. They just said, just change your expectations. Expect less, I think was the way they, they put it or something. But the idea was the same as Marcus Aurelius's, to change your opinion. And she said, okay, I'm just not going to sleep through the night. I'm going to enjoy some naps. I'm going to enjoy that my daughter wants to be here, cuddle up with me in these beautiful times of being a mother so connected with your child. She learned that some tribal cultures get up all the time. Anyway, that's just their normal, is to have this kind of broken sleep cycle. And some people try that out and really enjoy it and find that they feel more rested. So she went into it with a different opinion, a different attitude. And what happened? Everything shifted. The reason the thing shifts so much is that when we are having internal tension against something, when she really wanted things to look differently, then she was adding tension to the experience on top of the lack of sleep. So going back to my meditation, those little feet kicking on me, there I added tension to the experience. So it wasn't just the physical sensation, it was my inner tension. That's where the problem is. And so often that is either the problem itself or we're adding significantly to the problem. Lack of sleep is one thing, but being stressed about lack of sleep, that is quite another. And the final magical thing about this is often that when we do this and we relieve that internal tension, that the externals will change around. Because, boy, when you're a mother and you are not getting sleep and you're stressed out, there's stress hormones that are going through the, through the milk and probably affect the baby. And you're not you're sleeping well because you're stressed. So you're moving around, that wakes the baby up and it creates that problem magically almost 
when we give up on trying to get the goal, get the thing that we're after, then ah, oh, we relax down and we end up actually getting more sleep. And that's what happened with Rebecca. Try this out, my friends. It is super powerful. Remember Marcus's words. We can change our opinion of things and it changes our experience of them. This doesn't mean that we have to change our ideals, what we feel really passionate and, and deeply about, but it has more to do with the everyday experiences that anything that causes us anxiety or annoyance or stress. Let me know how you have changed your opinion of things in your life and how it has made a difference. When you share in the comments, it's not just a gift for me and a connection between you and me, but it gets shared with everybody else who's viewing these videos and it enriches us all. Thank you, love to you all. Can't wait to hear what you have to say down in the comments. Mm -hmm.